कभी कभी लगता है कि अपुन ही भगवान है Hi everyone today we'll be talking about how Netflix onboards new content onto their platform so if you have a TV series or a movie and you want to get it uploaded on Netflix apart from the legal challenges there's also engineering challenges that Netflix solves i'll be keeping this video as simple as possible so that the maximum number of viewers can understand what's going on but there will be some technical details when it comes to video encoding and other technical processes firstly what kind of challenges will we face when we are uploading new content well we need to store it in different formats sometimes you might be knowing about mp4 avi and other formats the reason they have this is because different people have different internet connection speeds so if you have a really good internet connection speed and you can deal with a really difficult format for example a detailed one where the data loss is minimum and you want to see like maximum video quality and then you'll have something like medium quality and low quality too so all of these are nothing but codecs a codec is a way in which you compress video so originally like this video right now it's going to be taking a lot of detail but when i edit this video i'll make sure that the size of the file is not huge you know i'll try to keep it within 1 gb so that is one type of codec if i reduce the quality more then the size of the file reduces because it's lossy compression i'm losing some data to keep the file size smaller and the second thing that netflix does is play with different resolutions if you are watching on your cell phone then the resolution that you need is much lesser than the resolution you need on your what's it called tv or even on your laptop in this way you're seeing that a single video has multiple formats and multiple resolutions and each of these formats and resolutions are creating tuples like they're creating pairs you have high quality 720p the number of formats let's call that f into the number of resolutions are the number of videos that you'll end up processing if the engineers at netflix come up with a much better technique of storing data let's say you had high quality requiring you 6 gb now it's just requiring you 1 gb then you take the older movies that you had encoded which are 6 gb big uh, you run them through the new process and it becomes 1 gb but the thing is this process is going to take some time so you don't want to give all this responsibility to a single computer because it's going to take time and it has a chance of failing what if the computer shuts down so what netflix does is really interesting and very smart it takes the original video and breaks it into chunks now what you can do with each of these chunks is to run them through these different resolutions and different formats at the end of it you'll have this chunk let's say chunk a dot mp4 so that's a that's a format in resolution 1020 then you'll have a in avi maybe 480 and so on and so forth effectively you have taken a really big video and broken it into small parts so that you can deal with it effectively per processor one resolution one format one chunk that's one task the story of processing these chunks is pretty interesting initially what used to happen is you would have this video file and you would break it into chunks of 3 minutes each so that's equal size it looks good because every processor is doing the equal amount of work and you can actually quantify it but the thing is imagine an action movie uh, and at the third minute the the two cars the villain's car is just about to overtake the heroes and then you have a new chunk if that's the case and someone makes an api call for this chunk it's going to take time like initially you're watching this video you come to this point you get an api call and there's a lag the user experience is bad because you wanted to see that seamlessly what they ended up doing is breaking the chunks not based on timestamps but based on scenes so you can make this instead of a 3 minute thing you can make it much more fine grained 4 seconds each it's called a shot one shot 4 seconds and you can collate shots you can put them all together to create a scene so that's the car scene you can think about instead of having it arbitrarily stop at 3 minutes you collate them into scenes and each scene has a lot of chunks like 4 second long chunks right now if a person is watching a video and they click on some point the video serving algorithm will take this as one scene and therefore the user experience will be much better because you get the entire block fetched together in fact this algorithm is much more complicated what happens is netflix sees the entire movie and treats it like a set of chunks if you arbitrarily go to points then netflix assumes that this movie is a sparse movie in the sense that you go to one point you see a scene 
and then you head to the next point and then you see a scene and so on and so forth. So its recommendation algorithm, its uh, prediction algorithm is going to say that this is a sparse movie, a sparsely seen movie. And what we should be doing is not trying to be too smart, not trying to be sending a lot of data. Instead, just send the data that the user has asked for because they are probably clicking on different points in that buffer that you get. On the other hand, if it's a very engaging movie, let's say, I don't know what's an engaging movie, but something that is a dense movie, meaning that people are watching it for a continuous period of time and you can easily say that, you know, linearly that this part is going to be picked up next. Then it's called a dense movie. Instead of sending just the part that you have asked for, it predictively, proactively fetches the future parts, gets it onto your computer and shows it to you. If you're wondering when Netflix stores all this data, then it's it's like Google Drive, it's called Amazon S3. Yeah, something that nearly all the engineers know. This is a place where people store static data, meaning that you don't change that data. You can go and store stuff. It's extremely cheap compared to a database because usually a database has updates and gives you other guarantees also. So Amazon S3 is what Netflix uses to store their video content. The most interesting thing about Netflix though is that they were able to bring up an innovative solution to something that was there in the internet space for ages. You know about internet service providers. If you go on your browser right now, type facebook.com, what's going to happen is that you will, you'll talk to your internet service provider. They have a list of addresses. They, they map that to IP addresses. So if you say facebook.com, it's mapped to an IP address. They have a table over here, which maps it. And this IP address is, you can assume it to be a physical place. It's actually a computer somewhere on the internet, which is giving you Facebook. So you're you're literally talking to Facebook when you say facebook.com. So that's, let's say, over here. Very similarly, when you type Netflix, it's an IP address. It's going to be taking you to a computer which gives you Netflix, or is Netflix, basically. So you can, you can actually end up chatting with it, maybe. But Netflix exists somewhere. And every time you ask your internet service provider to talk to Netflix, it goes and talks to that computer and then returns you the response. These servers are usually in the US, which means they're geographically concentrated, you know, and in a place like India, which is really far, it's going to take a lot of time to send a signal and then receive it, especially if it's video, because there's a lot of data which is going to be coming in and it's going to be slow. So to improve on user experience, one of the principal things that you do as a engineer is to cache information, which means you pre-compute and you store it in some place. So let's say Sacred Games comes out in India, you want to watch that, you put it in a cache. Now Netflix extended this concept and applied it to ISPs. So what the ISP does is that whenever it gets a request from India, let's say, and it's a movie which is from Bollywood, they won't go and hit the Netflix US servers just like that. They're going to be asking a cache which has been placed by Netflix. This is called a open connect box. In this box, you're going to be having a ton of movies. You can assume this to be something like a hard drive. And if you find the movie here, that's well and good. You just return it quickly. So that's a lot of bandwidth which was saved hitting the Netflix server. That's a lot of time which was saved. That's much better user experience. And also this is localized. So for India, you can keep separate movies. For Britain, you can have different movies. For the US, you can have different movies. So this is a brilliant concept because what you have done is reduced load on not just you, but also on the ISPs. So they really want to have these boxes. And every time you hit Netflix and you get a really quick response, you end up assuming that your ISP is a really nice guy. It's gone up to such an extent that around 90% of Netflix traffic is taken care of by these ISP boxes that they provide. They're called Open Connect. And this technology is revolutionary, not so much, who knows, but YouTube is also doing this. I think YouTube red boxes come up with ISPs, again, saving a lot of bandwidth for them and really improving the user experience in a lot of places. And also, of course, you can keep all your local popular movies in this box. In that way, the users here are going to be hitting this box far more often than they're going to be hitting this. Sometimes you do need some content change because something new has come up, a new series or a new movie. In that case, what you can do is around 4 a.m. in the night is a good time. The load on the boxes is minimum. So you can have a lot of write operations being sent in from the US server. So it'll suggest you what to copy. So you register your movie on Netflix. Netflix processes them in the same way that we talked about. After it's been brought down to chunks, it sends them to your ISP. 
or maybe it, it can directly send it over here and populate this box with these new movie chunks. That way this box has the latest content and the users are happy. So it's innovative methods on the video processing and the video serving side which keep Netflix running at scale. If you think about it, 90% of your requests are being taken care of by this box. So that is a superb gain and it's a really innovative solution. We'll be having a lot more videos like this, which is system designing in the real world. This is the interesting bit. And of course, if you have any doubts or suggestions, you can leave them in the comments below. If you like the video, then make sure to hit the like button. And if you want notifications for further videos like this, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time.